You survived the roughest business year of your career, and you're just starting to put the pieces back together. You got a great business idea to launch yourself into 2021, making more money than you have before. You assemble a crew about this new startup you want to do. You do all the work on your website to get everything ready to go. And you open the doors and you're like, yes, we are ready to do business. Let me open up a Google ads account, get a hold of one of these reps, and then open up and run. And we're going to drive business like never before. You go to bed, you wake up the next morning to see how many sales you got. You look into your account and this is what you see. Your Google Ads account has been suspended. Oh, the red bar of death up there says that your account has been suspended for suspicious activity or potential fraud, and you have no idea what they're talking about. Today, we're going to talk about the top seven reasons Google suspends accounts for suspicious payment activity or potential fraud. But before we go into these top seven reasons, it's important that you understand what suspicious payment activity in that suspension means to Google, because what you think it may mean might be a little bit different. And as you've learned, if you've been to my channel, what Google thinks is often different than what you think. First, you need to understand that actually within the description of this suspension is the key to getting this fixed. The policy says if they suspect, if they suspect suspicious activity, then you could be suspended. That means you could be completely innocent or you didn't do anything wrong, but you didn't do something right. And that made you look suspicious and they suspended you. The first one is the most obvious and one of the most common. You didn't pay your bill. Now, whether it was your credit card expired or quite frankly, you just forgot to pay that last invoice. But if you don't pay Google after a certain amount of time, they will suspend your account for suspicious payment activity because you failed to pay the bill. So this, man, I gotta be honest, with credit cards expiring all the time or you had your credit card or your identity stolen, you could trip over this one so much. It's not the worst suspension in the world for suspicious payment activity. You can deal with it, but it is the number one and most obvious one. The second one is really obvious and it's probably the most common in the black hat world. And that is to abuse the promotion coupons that they offer. I don't know why, but apparently there are people who run a business where they sell those Google ads coupons that you can use and get credit to your account. They made an entire business out of it. How they get these things is if they, if they're an agency and they're going through the partner program, Google will give these agencies a list of coupon codes. I mean, 20, 30, 40, I think the most I've gotten was 15, 50 at one point, I think it was. Anyway, it's a list of codes. It's supposed to help me go out and get clients and use these credits to attract people to try Google ads for the first time and to build your business. It's designed for the small business owners to get them started. Some black hat people have taken this credit and abuse it to another level and they sell it. They start these agencies, they go through the partner program, they get these coupons and they sell them to the open market to people. That's some shady stuff, but that's probably not the most common way that this one is abused. Um, probably if you're here today and you're dealing with this suspension and you have violated the promotional coupon reason for suspicious payment, it's because you probably made one of these misunderstanding mistakes. And that is you only get one coupon per business, not per account, but per business. And that's a big misunderstanding. You see these promotional coupons are designed to help attract new Google ads customers, not Google ads accounts. So I see oftentimes where, you know, you have one business and they have one vertical and one account for one business model. Then they open up another account for a completely different business model. And they want to keep them separate billing and promotion wise. And then they get another promotional coupon and they use it on that account. Then they do another one. They do it on that account. 
that one's a little more in, uh, innocent. And I'll be honest, a little bit of a misunderstanding here. Uh, you only get one per customer, not one per account. Number three, using a virtual credit card. If you're international, virtual credit cards are very common. But if you're in the United States, it's really an uncommon thing. We use traditional credit cards. But if you're international, that's everyday use. They don't think anything about it. Well, Google is a United States based company. These things are very mm, to them because it's hard to do background checks and verify billing. There's just a lot of secrecy behind them. And Google is all about understanding who they're partnering with virtual credit cards. There's a lot of theft and fraud around virtual credit cards. And there's a stigma associated with a virtual credit card owner that they don't want a traditional card because they want to be anonymous. You know, like who, who runs a business has a virtual credit card versus a traditional one. For this reason, Google does not allow them. And if you're international, I'm sorry. I know that takes away a way to make payments to Google, but don't use a virtual credit card. Number four, the way you accessed or created this account is sending off red flags. For example, in the United States, we have incorporations, we have LLCs, LPs, sole proprietors, different partnerships. It is very common and pretty much normal that if you are a United States company, you do business out of the United States. Yeah, it, it's a little bit weird when a United States company has someone in let's say Pakistan, open up a Google ads account under the American company's name and puts in billing from an American company. It looks suspicious, hate to say it. So if you have employees that are international um, or you've done some contracting with an agency or independent contractor, there are many times where their location and IP address and all that are causing problems for you. It's not that you did anything wrong, but remember in the definition, it's suspicious payment activity. It is suspicious that if you're a United States company to have a foreign person open up a United States Google ads account, it could be completely legitimate. Just a little, I don't know. They got to check that out, right? That solely alone won't get you suspended, but you add that with some other signals, it can make Google think fraud is occurring. Number five, making it difficult for Google to run a background check on the company that owns the Google ads account, the contact person, the address, the stuff on your website, all of the above. If they can't really verify people behind the billing the the llc or the incorporation they're just it's just very secretive it could cause them to suspend you because they don't know what's going on you have a right as a private citizen to keep your information private the governments around the world typically grant their citizens that right however google is a private company and they have the right to know who they're doing business with. And if they don't understand who they're doing business with, because you're, you know, hiding behind uh, registered agents, you're not listing anything about the company, you're trying to use PO boxes as if you're operating out of there, you're using all these different VPNs, whatever. And it's just really difficult for Google to understand if whoever is creating this account is authorized to or is authorized to use that billing. They're, they may suspend you and they often do. Number six, your bank or credit card denied Google's charges to it. When you have a brand new account and Google tries to either do test deposits or they try to bill your credit card for the first time, if they get any resistance or rejection from your payment during the processing, whether it's your bank or your credit card, that often will cause a suspension just to keep Google safe, they'll go, hey, whoa, this is potentially fraud. It didn't go through. We're just going to suspend this account. That happens a lot. And the worst part about this one is you don't have any control over it. So it's totally random. And ah, 
I wish there was some way to whitelist Google when you have a credit card because they've never seen that charge where you can go, hey, bank, you know, or hey, credit card. Our company's going to be having Google ads charges. Can you please not reject it? But I don't know any way to do that. And if you do, let me know. I've never heard of it. I, you know, honestly, I've never heard of it. Which leads us to number seven. There is a good portion of you who are getting suspended for suspicious payment activity because Google has figured out or have a very good hunch that you've been banned from Google ads before and you're trying to get back on. Yeah, this is also suspicious payment activity. Now, if that's the situation you're in, my heart goes out to you. Most of you innocently make mistakes and you get suspended. Some of y'all shady. Just some of you though, it's a small percent actually. You know, out of the amount of people they suspend, a small percent are actually shady people. The majority of people are people that don't understand these rules. They really don't. They don't have like a team of Google compliance people like me on their staff to dig through the rules to understand what they can and cannot do. And a lot of stuff is very mm, airy fairyland. I don't know any other way to say it. It's about the spirit of the policy, not the letter of the policy. So they need experience as to what actually internally is going on with Google with their interpretation of things. Or honestly, Google changes a lot over time. What they allow now, they don't allow it more and they keep a lot of internal documents. They're not available externally. So you, know, you get suspended, man. But the biggest issue here is you open up another account without having resolved the first suspension and it causes this account to be suspended. This can get really bad for you if you can continue to do this. So you need to stop opening accounts until you fix the suspension in the other account that you got first. Now that is actually the majority of the reasons why Google suspends people. The next thing we need to look at is how to actually fix these if you are in this situation. The first one, Kind of easy, man. Pay your bills. If it's gone to collection, go to whoever the attorney is that is doing the collections, pay your bill, get proof, get receipts, whatever you can once you got it. Then you can fill out the appeal form and let Google know you paid this collection, here's the receipts, whatever. The likelihood of you getting reinstated is very high, not 100%, but it's really high if you pay that bill. Number two. Listen, if you're black hat and you're selling coupon codes, I ain't got nothing for you. Sorry. That's kind of black hat and that's that small percent of people that got to go. However, if you're in the second situation where you had a misunderstanding, you were opening up accounts for different business models that do not in any way overlap with the first business model. And you just thought that, hey, GoDaddy gave me this, I'm gonna use it. HostGator gave me a coupon code, I'm gonna use it. Like they hand out these coupon codes to these affiliates like nothing, you know, and you just didn't understand. You only get one for the lifetime as a customer. You don't get one per account, it's one per customer. If you really show and explain, you did not understand, they do have forgiveness for this, but you know, you gotta have a really good sob story, okay? and then quit using promotional coupons. If you get suspended for the virtual credit card, you gotta go traditional. Use a bank account, you know, something like that. You gotta get away from this virtual stuff, which goes with also allowing them to do background checks on you. I'll just lump these in together, put real information on there, uh, quit hiding behind these companies. Sure, for the public, I know you don't wanna be sued or whatever, the public doesn't need to know, but when it comes to your own company, you actually need to disclose this to Google. In fact, they have a verification process now where they're going to tell the public in your ad who's behind this company. So you're not going to have the privacy anyway, if you ever want to be on Google ads. So just come on, man, on the website, in your billing, your contact, your uh, operational address, I don't, you know, mailing address can be what it is, but your operational address cannot be the stinking UPS store. On that note, I just got a vent on this because I've seen it thousands of times where people put a uh, sweet number, blah, 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 and it goes to a UPS store. Google owns Google Maps. Come on, man. 
I mean, they own the, the search network. They know exactly what address that is the moment you put it in. You're not fooling anybody. You look shady. Put all the accurate stuff in there. Contact. Quit using these. Uh, I don't know if they're disposable. Oh yeah, they're not disposable phones. They're um, the secondary phones. So you have a you have a cell phone, right? You get a cell phone, and you put a secondary number on it. Don't do that. Get a real. Get a like actual phone dedicated to your business. Google has difficulty verifying when you do that vanity number stuff or whatever. Get get a real number. Make it easy for them to understand who they're doing business with. If you were suspended because you have an employee in an international country or you contracted with some uh, marketer, some PPC management agency or person and they live in another country and they created your account for you, I understand this one can be challenging, but what you need to do is show when you do this appeal, you need to show that this international person was authorized to do this. This was their IP addresses, the country they're doing business from, the nature of your relationship, and they need to understand they were empowered to do this for you. It is not fraud. Attach some documents showing all this and Google, they'll check it out. And if it makes sense, they'll reinstate your account. Sometimes you got to appeal more than once, you know? Now I will tell you, Google does this a lot. Like if you do an appeal and it just, hey, they accepted it. I got reinstated. I didn't really do anything other than say, hey, well, you know, this is my billing details. What's happening is not because you told them it was your billing details. They went and they looked at the information and they cross-referenced it with some other stuff and they figured out, okay, this person must be contracted to manage their account and they created that account form and it's okay. So they actually did the work for you. It wasn't anything special that you did. So you can get over this one. And sometimes it takes more than one appeal with different types of inf evidence and information showing that person that's international is authorized to actually open an account for you. If you're suspended because your bank or credit card rejected payment, Contact your bank, contact your credit card company, tell them it's a legitimate, legitimate charge. Let it go through. Um, I think you can get them whitelisted at that point, but not beforehand. Um, they have to actually see a charge to know that that's a legitimate charge. Once that happens, then do your appeal and have them reinstate your account at that point. Because now you have evidence to show and they could try to charge you again and all will be well with the world. Which leads us to number seven. If you've been suspended before and you open up a new account and you got suspended for suspicious billing activity, then that suspicious billing activity is going to change into circumventing systems. That's what's going to happen. So if that happened to you, honestly, the thing you need to do is to fix the suspension in the original account before you can come and deal with the suspension in this account. I actually created a couple of videos and you're gonna need to watch them both. One on circumventing systems, hopefully it pops up over here. Uh, the circumventing system suspension and the other one, how to get unsuspended. Or maybe they'll cross like this, whatever. Watch those videos before you do an appeal or anything. You really need to watch them because when you appeal and how you appeal and how soon you appeal, that all matters. You need to be very armed with information to get these suspensions overturned. But that is actually what happens with this suspicious payment or this fraud detection suspension that they do on that red bar of death. And these seven reasons will cover the majority of things you need to do to overcome this situation. 